Today, we are joined by Beat 'em Ups to go through Nintendo's history of weird and wacky gimmicks and decide what could possibly come to Switch 2. Whoa! It, it feels like the Switch 2 reveal is just around the corner. We'll be talking about that in our news section, but it's a good yeah. time to think about Nintendo's history with hardware gimmicks mm -hmm. and whether they might try and squeeze one in to the Switch 2. There's kind of like a couple interesting schools of thought. Like one group of people's like, let's just stick with the Switch and, you know, just make it more powerful and, and I'll be good. But there are, there are some people who are kind of gravitating around some ideas from the past. And we know Nintendo is never one to let a good idea just go to waste. They will sit on it That's right. for years, for decades if it takes, and then say, oh, maybe, maybe now's the time. And, you know, we know that Nintendo loves everything that Switch has accomplished. They're, they're feeling really good about how long this generation has been, the millions and millions of hundreds of millions that they've sold, this huge player base that they've built but we also know nintendo's weird <laughs> they like to be you know very out there um they have these sort of wacky ideas this is what they some some people call this the nintendo magic um so you know that they are thinking about some maybe some wacky and weird things to differentiate switch from switch Two, so yeah we're, we're really excited to go through some of these fun little gimmicks to see if they have a potential of coming back we're joined by woodhawker from beat em ups um, we actually recorded this portion of the podcast when we were with wood in new york last week um, we were on the nontendo podcast with wood and it was a fa fantastic time and he was so nice to jump on our podcast to talk about all these things so it's it's been a great couple of uh, a fun shoots with wood and and we're, we're excited to dig into more switch Two stuff yeah we had the best time visiting him and hopefully you've seen that episode and we now have a vlog up on our channel kind of documenting our trip with some cool behind the scenes stuff you know he's he's the friend that i think we never expected to have um True. you know we were introduced to him under not the best circumstances uh, regarding his departure from the Nintendo creator program, but we worked it out and like, we, we really are on the same wavelength on a lot of things, which has been fun to realize and get to know him better and see him again. And it's, it's, it's one of those things that we wouldn't have had the opportunity to do if we didn't start this channel Hey, it's, it's been about two years. That's another thing I want to mention. It's been about two years since we started this, but this I is know. just one of those positive, this is one of these great positive stories that we have coming out of it. It's so true because yes, like you said, it's been about two years um, since we started the Kit and Krista podcast. And when we started this, we knew that it was going to give us a certain element of freedom, you know, like when we were inside Nintendo, obviously we had different kinds of access and different things that we can share with you guys. But one part of it is we were not always in control of things that we we're able to do, people that we were able to meet and collab with. And now that we have the Kit and Krista podcast, like we can do whatever we want. And I think one of the great things that came out of that is is absolutely this um, newfound friendship with, with Wood um, and just meeting all of these new people as well and being able to build our community and be very, um, I think, active within our community is something that we've always dreamed of doing and we couldn't when we were inside Nintendo. So to be able to do that now and, and do it for two years has been really amazing. Now we got to say that you're you're recording this episode under not the greatest of conditions. You're a little under the weather, to put it lightly. I am not feeling the best. You know, it is tough this time of year. It's like winter time. You know, we've been traveling. We were, as we said, we were in New York. We were on a, on an airplane with lots of other people. Like you, just your immune system just might not be able to uh, to handle it. And I I came back from our New York trip, which was fantastic. And then I woke up on Monday morning and was like, I think I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> so I am heavily medicated. Oh, good. On, it's going to make for flu, a great podcast. flu medicine. So if I say something crazy <laughs> or if I look like doggy poo-poo, you'll know why, because I'm not feeling great. Um, but I don't care. I The show must go on, okay, people? I, so I offered to do this whole thing, AM radio style monologue, 
Um, but no, we're, we're powering on. Uh, hopefully this works on. out. I'm ready to put yes. the show on my shoulders. If it I'm like needs sweating. To. I'm I'm literally oh, no. like feverishly sweating as as we're talking doing the intro. So oh dear, that's what this is gonna be. But again, um, well I'm I'm not yes. at home. I'm I'm in our studio today because I got a message that we had a very important package that came. Which um, oh? we'll, we'll we'll talk more about that. But I literally just opened the box. I just got this in the mail. The impact of Awada, which oh, is um, a great book done by the folks over at Nintendo Force. And this one's special because I actually contributed a little bit to this book. That's so awesome. I have I have a little segment in here that was about um, when I was working heavily on Nintendo Direct and kind of, you know, learning the ropes and the philo philosophy of Nintendo Direct directly from Mr. Iwata, which was yeah. uh, the best way to do it. So right. I'm very excited to see that. But I'm also I mean, there's oh. all these other little anecdotes and stories in here from other from other people who worked with him and knew him so this is a really special thing and i'm excited to uh check it out they sent one for you as well oh good so that'll be I'm that'll so be waiting excited. for you when you can come yes. out of your little bubble but yes, um I'm no longer contagious yes. yeah yeah more to come How on that exciting yes you know i have been actually thinking about mr awada a lot because whenever we go from one hardware generation to the next i think about sort of the legacy that he's left and and no matter you know how how much nintendo grows as a company i think his um you know print his his fingerprint on the company will be forever and it always shows up the most during a new hardware launch so yeah i've been thinking about him a lot and that's so cool that um we can we can have this to look look through it that's that's exciting yeah i'm excited for that uh something else that is continuing on is this Nintendo Direct Watch. So Ooh, it's getting a little tricksy, isn't so, it? So we're recording this on a Tuesday, not our usual mm -hmm. Monday, which has allowed right. you know some of the week's news to develop. And right. again, we'll talk about it more in the news itself, but nothing so far. Uh, I think a lot of people have their hopes pinned on tomorrow for some sort of announcement. There's also this Microsoft thing. Yeah. That's happening on Thursday. So a lot of people what wondering, is there, is there come some kind of, are these things happening? connected somehow? Yes, putting yes. the, like, I got my big pin board with all the strings connecting it all. It says, follow the money. I don't know. Oh, follow the money. <laughs> Always follow the money. Yeah. Yes. It's getting a little complicated, I think. And it's definitely out of the ordinary from our historical February direct timing and expectations. And yes, this Xbox um, podcast that's going to be coming out later this week uh, is a bit of a, a wrench in the works. So yeah, let's see. It's, hey, it's like juicy it, stuff. Get out the popcorn. What's going to happen next? We don't know. Imagine like having it. a podcast for your video yeah. game platform where you right. could share important news and let the important people for your company talk to your fans. Imagine what a ridiculous idea. That. Who what would ever do something that stupid? <laughs> uh, no, but um, Thursday, Thursday is, is shaping up to be packed. We're, we were going to another industry event that we can't talk about yet. We'll talk about it oh, later. Yeah. I was supposed to have a dentist appointment. I'm going to have to rearrange some things to make time for well, all of Well, your dentist appointment is not the same as an Xbox. It is. My update. teeth are important. Your, dental health your, is very your, important. How dare you? The, the kit dental business update is not the same as the I'm Xbox gonna, business update. I'm going to put this out here for the world to hear. Never had a cavity. Never <laughs> once true. in my entire yeah. life, which is something you Perfect. cannot say. I have definitely You cannot had say that. Definitely. I go so to don't take like don't take dental advice from from anybody named Christy Yang. Take it from me. <laughs> Just go to the dentist, though. You should. Yes. Everyone should go to the dentist. Get your teeth cleaned. It feels good. Dental health is very important. Nintendo right. Directs are very important. Microsoft Business Updates are very important. Business We're here update. for all of it this very week. Very important, yes. Am I going to make it through in my feverish state? Is this, is this all a fever dream? I mean, I mean my Thursday might look a lot different than your Thursday, the way things are going. My my goal <laughs> is to get better by that by then because I think I need to like rally so we can like do okay. all the things that's happening on Thursday. Okay. So anyhow, let's get through this and then I'm going to go back to bed. And then we'll see how it goes. Yes. Uh, we're just about to summon up our good friend Wood to talk about Nintendo gimmicks. But first, we got a shout out sponsor. We got a new sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Raycon. Thank and you, Raycon. I gotta say, I am very excited to talk about Raycon and their everyday earbuds because I have been using these for the past week. 
I They're love amazing. these things. They are so amazing. So I am very particular with my earbuds. I have like weird shaped like little baby ears. And they, ha they have such a great comfortable fit. They're, they come with different um, uh, like nubbins to help you like have the right yeah. fit in your ears. They're great. I've been using them to listen to all of my podcasts and also for all of my editing, which has been awesome. I have the same thing. When I use other wireless earbuds, they never fit in my ear, and I have mm. the problem of them just straight up falling out. Yes. Or, and I need to too. buy like some other adapter to get it to stay in, which just stinks. But the other thing is, and I've I've found this like if they don't have that proper in-ear fit, you just end up cranking up the volume higher because a lot That's of the sound ears. is just like leaking out of your ear. Yeah. So when I put these in, I was like, oh, the volume I'm using is actually a lot lower mm -hmm. because the sound is actually going into my yeah. ear, which exactly. is uh, a little bit different. But um, these feel great. The battery life has been really good. They come in this cute little case. Um, and we can do all these sort of sound customization things as well um, yeah. to kind of adjust the sound if you want more bass or you want more of a balanced sound. There's a noise isolation mode and awareness, awareness mode, but these things have, have really surprised me. Um, I love them. The price is great. And, yeah, I was uh, going to say the price is really good for the, the super high quality of these earbuds. Yes. Yeah, so please... Go to buyraycon.com slash Kit and Krista today to get 15% off your Raycon order plus free shipping. That's buyraycon.com slash Kit and Krista to score 15% off and free shipping. Buyraycon.com slash Kit and Krista. I'll put the link right over here and also in the description below. All right, here we go with our great segment with Wood. All right, so we are here with our special guest, Wood. Welcome. Oh, I don't need that. I like, <laughs> I lent into that. Like, I was <laughs> like, um, Hello. <laughs> yes, we just spent a, a lot of fun with you. We had a lot of fun recording your podcast, mm -hmm. being on the Nontuna podcast. We're spending the day together. Thank you so much. I appreciate together. it. I can't believe you guys came back to New York a second time. Of course. Never in question. Any time. You guys are so awesome. Um, and it's so awesome that you're going to be on our podcast I know. Now. I'm excited. Yes. And we're going to be talking about switch to potential gimmicks. Right. You know, mm -hmm. Nintendo mm -hmm. never lets an idea completely fall off. Mm -mm. Yeah. Like when the 3DS came out, they were like, hey, did you know back in the 80s, we were fiddling with 3D? <laughs> and we just kept that idea in the back of our pocket. I mean, the they brought back the Ultra Hand in Zelda from like one of their first toys that there they made. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So we want to run through some gimmicks from Nintendo's past. We also have a few that are not from Nintendo, and we're going to talk about, we're each going to rate it by how much do we want this in the Switch 2. Okay. Either a lot, indifferent, or just no. Okay. And then also, how likely is it? Very likely, somewhat likely, or it not, not likely. Okay. likely. No. Also, no. <laughs> so, there's a lot here. Yeah. A lot of gimmicks. That's the what years. they're known for. But they are known for gimmicks. Sometimes did, they can get them in trouble, This, this list is making me nervous, I'll be honest, okay. <laughs> as we're going through this list. All like, right. oh boy. First it's gimmick. From the 3DS. We'll just start there. Glasses-free 3D. I was hoping you'd get to this oh. one. Oh. Glasses-free 3D. So could they That's add fun that to say. onto the screen for mm -hmm. Switch 2? Mm -hmm. Still feels very ahead of its time because nothing else <laughs> uses it, right? Yeah. That's so true. Bring it back. I mean, this is more than 10 years old. More than 10 years old. It felt pretty revolutionary at the time, but the, the thing with the glasses three, three, free 3D, that's hard to say, is like, it was cool to look at for like a second. Yeah, nobody it's really the same as HD that Rumble it. that we talked about earlier. That's yeah. coming up later. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's cool it, the first time. You see it? It's like, yeah. wow, I'm so yeah, glad my thing so has cool. this. Neat. Now I'm turning it off. And then you turn it off <laughs> yeah. because yeah. it's annoying and it gets in the way and it hurts right. your eyes and, and it makes you get a headache. A way, yeah. Then you can't see it anymore. It needs to be exactly dead on. Hold otherwise it, really it ruins stable. the whole thing. Yeah. Right. Also, no games actually support it, but a couple right. of first party games. Yeah. Exactly. And it was expensive, I think, too. Yeah. yeah. Has to be. Yeah. 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 So how likely how do you much, think? Or how much do you want it? Let's start with that. I'm going to say no. Not at all. Yeah. I'm indifferent towards it. I, 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 I feel like, because the, is it like a two screen thing? It has to be you some sort of. You have to have two so I feel yeah. like of screen. That has to be an issue with OLED. 
Right. And like I'm a oh. big fan of OLED oh, at this oh, oh, point, oh. so I don't want anything okay, so interfering yeah, with OLED. That's a good point. That's a good so point. So if that's true, yeah. then yeah. no. Then no. And how likely is it? I think it's a big fan. I don't think it's a big fan. They, they learned their lesson. They learned their lesson, and they had a price drop that thing. Oof. It's yeah. it's one of the many things that it's like cool for Nintendo because they get to develop first party games for it, but then it's an expectation for other companies. Totally. Like, yeah. are you gonna use this cool thing or are you just yeah. gonna ignore it and completely? All these people are like, we're not gonna do this. This yeah. is like a lot of development a lot of work. Yeah. energy for The us. more right. complicated you make porting a third game or the more effort it seems like, it's the like less people gonna are gonna, gonna do yeah. it. Right, right. Okay, good. Pretty much agree on that. Uh, next, also from the three DS, how would you feel about an AR camera? A built-in AR camera. Oh, it's like you remember okay. scanning the little yeah. the little card and your me pop so, out. You remember that? My mind went to two places. An AR camera? Not really. I don't think we need that. I didn't really get much use the first time. Right. But okay. a, but a camera? Yeah. I could see a camera coming in handy. That's I mean, later on the list. Okay. Uh, Can I oh, interest you in it? In I a don't want to jump in ahead. Some sort of Nintendo esque photo editing app. Are you interested in that? I would be interested in it. You'd be what, interested in that. What if it was like the new Apple Vision Pro thing where mm. you flip it around, take a photo of yourself, and yeah. it makes a me out of you? Oh, okay. It's like okay. You do then, avatars. They yeah. had that, and it never worked. And then for yeah. Street yeah. Pass 2, that, yeah, it never worked back in the day. No. Yeah. But this one does work. And then Street Pass 2, banger. So you need those two together. Yeah. You got, you got the camera. Got it. You get the, the cool like avatar creation, mm -hmm. meme creation, and then you use it for all that street passing. Mm -hmm. But the, a specific AR camera where you're like, you got two cameras, you're scanning away mm. cards or QR Doing codes. Doing stuff in the real world. Doing like, stuff. All those Kid Icarus, yeah. those Kid Icarus cards, those are cool that kind of had no use or at like all. Or like a Pokemon Go kind of situation. Imagine that. Okay. Yeah. Imagine that. I mean, there's specific there's specific him. uses like that. This was pure gimmickry at its at its highest. It's yeah. very gimmickry. Yeah. It's very specific it's use. Yeah. That at the end of the day, every game you play is not going to need it. Right. Yeah. So. Right. Exactly. I don't know. So I don't do think you want so. it? AR camera? I don't want it. You don't. So I'm, I'm a no. no. Not really. No. I'm, I'm a no. How likely yeah. is it? It's a little more likely than 3D. It's a little bit 3D. more likely. I mean, a camera yeah. is something they could add to a similar form factor. And if you already have a camera, why not just add an AI yeah. element to it? Right. It's, a, I'm, it's I'm a little more likely. I might be talking myself into this. It's like, it's like top Nintendo form. Now imagine do. if you could point the AR camera at an amiibo and it like comes to life. Oh. oh. It starts oh. moving oh. and it like been runs, working on it like technology. runs out of its box or something. Oh. We like spent the last seven years life, perfecting but, yeah. this technology. That Get would be excited. Cool. I could see it. Like they're into this kind of this type of mm -hmm. gimmick. So I can see it. Yeah. I mean it seems silly to be like that would that that's a good idea because you'll never use it again. But right. that is Nintendo. Exactly. Yeah. Funny right. things they no never they're use. They're the again. kings of that. Right. Okay. I'm gonna say I'm it's somewhat likely. Somewhat likely. Somewhat likely. Somewhat. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next we have another from the DS family of systems. Oh. Dual screens. Oh, clamshell Somehow, design. could they squeeze another screen onto this thing? That's kind of been a little bit of a rumor of the two yeah. screens for the Switch 2. And you've seen those crazy mock-ups where it's like... Yeah, two, like so a, it flips open. Like a well, there was also design. a recent patent that Nintendo filed for a two-screen clamshell thing that came apart. Oh, which, oh yes. yes. Which yes. they did say right. they have no interest in actually making. They filed right. tons of patents, a lot of yeah. patents. just to like yeah. have them. Yeah. So they, they are right. a company that does but that. But that does make it a little bit more likely. Yeah, I mean, they might they have, have the some patents. time down in the future. Or yeah. maybe now, I don't know, yeah. I mean, dual screens are proven to be awesome, I think. <laughs> I think we all agree that... Yeah. It was pretty nice. What do you think? You don't. You're a little down on it. Where have we proven 3DS. it? <laughs> Where's the the 3DS? DS and the 3DS? Those were great. I love those. Yeah, but did we miss the two screens when did. we got the you Switch? Did? I kind of did. Yeah. You want your menus on another screen? Like like a little, little mini, little little mini, mini map. map? My well, the, mini little, map. The, the that progress was, bar. Yeah. That was kind of what the Wii U was. But it was separate. Yeah. You can't, mm. We're not doing that. We're not doing some gamepad situation. Yeah. But then how do you how do you make it? Home consoleable. How do you make it dockable? That's the, at that that's the question. It might be a yeah. cable instead of a dock. Uh, no. Well, that's why you detach it because yeah. you dock half of it. That's right. And oh. you have the no, you stick have it on your stick it on your screen. controller you or something. Have something else, some some other way to do yeah. it. Magnet like an Apple device where like a magnet charger in the back. <laughs> that is I, the true answer. Is it's not my problem. That's for them to figure <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, that's but true. I, genius I, is over there. I'm like, I could get on board with it. How much do I want it? I'm gonna say it a lot. 
I want this a lot. You want that a yeah, lot? I, I want, want that a somewhat. lot. I'm a somewhat. <laughs> the only reason why I would do- drop down a somewhat is because, again, I get so scared of third-party devs looking at it and being like, yeah. two screens. Oh, yeah. I got to develop my Batman right. to have an inventory. Yeah. No, We've I don't. Through I'm not going to yeah, bother. That's true. That's the only reason I would go to somewhat. It's, Fine. A, it's a barrier to enter for It people, is. Right? Mm-hmm. How likely is it? For Switch 2, I don't think it's very likely. I think they're going to keep with the same form factor. I yeah. think it's going, to be, it's going to take a lot yeah. for them to go away from this current form factor. Like, a lot. Yeah, I mean, they usually get really wacky every time, and they just scrap the last thing. But this was too successful. Exactly. You have to imagine. Now, they're like, they've like put themselves in a little bit of a box, which yeah. is fine. Because we do it's like this It's a nice box, a because it's, it's a, a versatile box. box. It is. It's handheld. It's at home. You're, yeah. It's already wacky. It's wacky enough. Yeah, we don't need to do any. We don't need to like reinvent the wheel here. I know. What about we need to differentiate from the Steam Deck and all these other things that are aping the original form factor? We need to have the next step, so that we're not just another one of those now. But that's that step of two screens is like I've been there, done that for them. Yeah, that's not the next step. That's the last step. We've moved past that. I'm step. gonna put myself in some. The next I'm step say is somewhat. three streets. I gotta hold the faith. <laughs> it I gotta folds hold the faith. out twice. <laughs> it's like origami yeah. down give, to give like me, 17 screens. And then all these two streets. little mini rearview mirror ones that pop out as well. <laughs> 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 all right, Con- somewhat controversial. Next, we have HD Rumble, the aforementioned. Mm-hmm. Ah. Mm. You know, I I actually think it will, it will have that. Yeah, I think it's, if it's there already, then yeah, I'm yeah. going to take it out. I, I don't yeah. want to jump straight to the conclusion, but I agree that this is probably very likely. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like even though it's not really utilized or used, it's something yeah. that doesn't get in the way. <laughs> right. Do you want it, though, or do you not care? I personally, hmm, I, I mean, I don't care, but I would feel like I was losing something. Because even the PlayStation right. 5 controller has, yeah. like, uh, like HD there Rumble. There is such a divide that. between yeah. the usage of Rumble in a first-party Nintendo game and literally everything else. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, the it's it's physically loud. The yeah, Rumble. It, can I, actually, the Rumble. it's so loud, and the, people think I'm crazy for this. I turn Rumble off on my Switch. I, I do too. Yes. Oh my god. Yeah, because yeah, it's, it's too loud. Yeah, it's, it's too like, loud. Yeah, it's you not can just hear the it. And I, I play it. in bed so much, and I'm sitting there with Kim. Yeah. And the whole time it's just zzz, zzz, Yeah, zzz, and you nuts. don't want your pillow to vibrate when yeah. you're playing in bed. That's weird. Yeah, it is yeah. weird. It is so weird. I'm going to say I don't Keep want it. Keep the vibration but it's very out of the bedroom. <laughs> 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 but what about milking a cow? You're never going to mm. get that again. The sensation of milking well, a cow. Well, you talk about been there, done that. Keep, the, the, keep done the milking the cow <laughs> out of the bedroom. <laughs> All right. So I don't want it, but I think it's very likely. I, I think it's very likely. Yeah, I think it's likely. I'm uh, it's, it's not I'm even that. Cozy is going to come out with a, a, some, new, some new amazing cubes of ice thing that's going to blow your <laughs> yeah. mind and we'll yeah. never see it again. He's going to shake a box yeah. again with how many marbles are in this box. Right. Yeah, it's going to happen. And Josh. I'll love it just as much we'll the next time. Yeah. Now we can do magic. 11 marbles. <laughs> he's got the magic hands, you know, he's going to make you want mm-hmm. it. The slider hands. Yeah. All right. Next is a big one. Oh. Street pass. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, street pass. That's a given. I mean, what well, conversation? Well I, I, well, I think we can all agree that we very much. Now, all are you want are you it. are you getting your emotions caught up with what you think could actually no, happen? No, I honestly think this is this is dumb that it wasn't on Switch this whole time. Oh. I think it would have just. Do so you added, think it's likely to happen for Switch too? I didn't say likely. I'm talking about what I want. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. What you want? Okay. Likely, I think I think they've moved away from it, but maybe. But, I think they might want to encourage you to do more I mean they, they've learned so much from Switch like this generation of Switch mm-hmm. like people do love the handheld part of it mm-hmm. a lot like you were just saying like yeah. it's turned you into a handheld gamer. I play primarily handheld with Switch when we exactly. were out and about with Nintendo developers and they saw somebody out with a Switch in, mm-hmm. in the public they got so happy yeah. like they love that Right. But now imagine like an ecosystem where your Switch is connecting to other Switches yes. and you're sharing information. And so they, that's exactly. why I think it's likely yeah. for them to bring it back because they do want to encourage you and they did this with 3DS where it's like they want you to like take it with you everywhere. Yeah. And then they saw that when they were launching Switches, like of course they had to give equal footing to like home right. and mm-hmm. on the go. But now I think they like, they're wise to the fact that people love taking this thing with yeah. them. So they might want to like double down on that. Also, with like. them, with their main competitor right now, I wouldn't even say it's Steam Deck. I'd say it's mobile gaming and people that always mm-hmm. have their mm-hmm. phones mm-hmm. with them. Yeah, giving people more of a reason to have something in their hands at all times and yes. to put the phone yeah. away. Yes, 
anything that you can add it, to that ecosystem. It just makes sense. It does. Yes. We all want it so bad. I How do much do want I want it? it? A lot. A How lot. likely is it? Very. It, see, it would, <laughs> it's speaking into existence. It would have been so cool if, like, today we all traded something on our switches. I know. Yes. I need, like, some sort Damn. of physical thing that can happen, like, a, like an action. Mm -hmm. Bring back the gold pants, me. Oh, me. The Please. gold pants. Mm -hmm. I want that. Or, like, whenever you go to a trade show, like, you go to PAX. I know. And you get, like, Tons and tons of street passes, uh -huh. and it just feels like you accomplished something. And it makes people want to get a switch so that they can be yes. a part of that. Yeah, and those puzzle pieces that you, you just gotta com just complete those puzzles. Find me. And then funky hats. Oh, I love the hats. Do not mess this up, <laughs> yeah. Nintendo. Nintendo Please, just do, it. Nintendo. Nintendo. do not mess this up. Seriously. That's all I have to say. All right, next. Next, we have next generation motion controls. So not just, not literally the same thing that's in a Joy-Con, but we, we've taken it to the next level. Mm, next like step Like body up. Next tracking. level. Yeah, what is well, that? Well, oh, there's more of that. Okay. That's not that. What do you mean by next generation motion? It's it's even more precise. Oh. It's more, oh. more well, you would that's, that's hoped, I guess. That's expected, right? I mean, you'd oh. want it to get better I don't know, is it? You'd want it to be more accurate every time. I mean, time. they could be like, motion control wasn't like a big deal. Switch People to didn't sports really, is going to be hot. They didn't really have a lot of games with motion. We don't really use motion are you, that are much. Are you saying that they might not even have motion at all? Is they this might, the opposite? I mean, they could have motion, but they could just they not They could even, really downplay it. They could really it. not innovate it's on like it. It's like very basic. I mean, I think gyro alone has been super popular on gyro Switch. Aiming, gyro aiming, yes. For a lot of that. Important. For a lot yeah. of first party games, but also third party games yeah. actually but use you gyro would, I mean, a lot. Do you need... Like, the, do you need to emphasize next generation motion controls like, to do something you're already kind of doing? Like, we level of emphasis on motion controls, yeah. basically, I guess, is, the, is for I the mean, next switch to, like, I don't, I don't think you have to emphasize it, but I would like to hope that it, if it has motion controls, it's it is like better improved, than ever. Improved. Okay. And improved. Yeah. Okay. And I'm sure they'll touch on it. And they'll be like, hey, this is better now. All right. But we know you don't care. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. anyway. <laughs> so, anyways, just like the, the marbles. Moving uh, on. Moving on. Yeah, so I, I think this is pretty likely. Like, they've always kind of continued to do motion control. But how much do you want it? I don't really care. I'm indifferent. I'm indifferent to this. Yeah. Yeah, I don't care. I can't think of a game I even use motion controls for. Exactly. Yeah. I, I do the gyro aiming with, like, yeah. Splatoon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that's pretty much it. And then how likely? Mm -hmm. Somewhat? Yeah, I think. You seem more convinced. I think pretty likely. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Next. NFC and Amiibo. Mm. Oh. Will Amiibo continue on with the mm. Switch 2? It's become kind of a trickle, a little trickle of Amiibo. Yeah. The last it's more couple years. For them to make, you know, manufacture. It's one more thing to put in that system to... that costs money. I don't think they'd want to rule it out. Yeah. I think where we are now, they would add it in even if it's discontinued support pretty quickly, but it would still be an option. Yeah. I feel like they might just do it for like very like limited edition stuff. Like we're celebrating like the 35th anniversary of such and such game. Mm -hmm. So we'll do like an extra thing. Well, I mean, there'll, there'll probably be another Smash. Like I'm assuming there'll be another Smash Brothers. Or is it like Ultimate Deluxe? I like think Mario Kart. Version. At some point in our Nintendo lives, there will be a version of Smash where we're getting more characters and they can right. do more amiibos. Oh. I don't think they'd want to rule it out. Or maybe the next Mario Kart, they might look at doing Mario Ooh, Kart Mario amiibos. Kart. Yeah. Yeah. Amiibo that, that's so very cool. smart. Yeah. Well, they're actually, uh, what if it was a little car that you could actually drive around? Exactly. To? Like a little toy car. Like a little RC right. car. I kind of like that. <laughs> I, mean, I, I want feel, them to do that. I yeah, really like amiibo. That hasn't been done. But I feel like the perfect amiibo use has still not been found. Oh, no, I, I agree. Yeah. I yeah. feel like there should have been an Amiibo game yes. that used all the and Amiibos. Not amiibo amiibo Festival. And not, not Amiibo not Festival. Amiibo <laughs> festival. <laughs> not Amiibo but Festival. Yeah, but like, like a Skylanders, they, but with Amiibos. What if they amiibos. did some cool integration to Mario Kart 9 with Amiibo? Yeah, like they could right. easily do that. Yeah. So I think there's still interest oh. in Amiibo over... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mm. put this in the rare. How also, much do I want it a lot? How likely is it vary? If we're assuming it has backwards compatibility, and you, if you want to oh. play like a Zelda or something, oh. and there's not going to be Amiibos... Playing that card now. Yeah. You're playing that card, okay. Yeah. All right, so then All it's right. pretty likely. I think, it would I think it's likely. They wouldn't want to just like rule yeah. that whole thing yeah. out for people. That's kind We've of had mean. it for like two generations now. Yeah. yeah. We'll yeah. keep yeah. it. Okay. Okay. Next one is going to upset a certain somebody here. Me? Well, he looked at you. Uh, so probably. Oh. It's simply cardboard. 
Ugh. Oh. <laughs> Labo cardboard. Gosh, they love cardboard, don't they? I they think that's already it. over. I don't... It's gotta be. Like, don't give me something We've learned our lessons. We've got yeah. the next generation of Labo. That's not for the environment. That's not a good look these days, you know? My audience is probably sick of hearing me bring this up every time, but my amiibo was on the floor of my house when I got flooded, like, oh. five years ago. And you know what happens to wet Labo? Uh, oh, it's just disintegrating. Mush. Yeah, yeah. just like brown mush. Ironically, the only one that wasn't on the floor was the fishing rod. <laughs> so I, in the flood, I kept the fishing. That's kind of ironic. Yeah, it is kind of ironic. Kind of, the piano, though, is gone. The piano, yeah. it's all gone. Yeah. yeah. We had really high hopes for Labo. Me too. When it was coming out, we're like, this, this is truly unique. This is truly something only Nintendo yeah. could cook up. And then we were deeply disappointed by Deep all the results. Yeah. I reviewed it very positively at the time yeah. because I had just built it and it was like building Lego. I was like, right. that was there so much fun. There is satisfaction to the, like, the real world yeah. crafting the actual The actual making it initially, I was like, that was a lot of fun. Lego is expensive, what? this is expensive. Made my review a week or two later. I was probably too nice to Lego. <laughs> It's I'm like not using just, this now stuff. It's just tr literally trash. It's just yeah. trash. It's and you can't trash. put it away. You can't fold it back down. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, but they love this kind of stuff. So yeah. I don't know. It might be. Maybe. I don't want it ever again, but I think it's I, somewhat likely. I think this is the rare double no. I think they got burned on this and they're they like, we're, we, yeah, we need to wait another I don't know 10 years will. before okay. we bring Hopefully this back. Hopefully they don't make us make something out of something else. Like they also, <laughs> they made like a whole, or something. yeah, claymation. Here they made go. a whole Labo VR and then had like three games had support for that. it. That was the you one that I liked. VR, I liked yeah. it. I liked it. <laughs> I like hearing you say Labo. <laughs> yeah, I say it wrong <laughs> like and that. weird. All right, this next one's a little bit funky. When we were at Nintendo, a little factoid that they loved to share was that, did you know, there's actually more Wii Fit balance boards sold than like Xboxes and Xboxes. Playstations. Whoa. It, yeah. it was a crazy stat. That yeah. is crazy. And I think a lot of people still have that sitting in some closet. Have what you if, ever gone to like retro video game stores and just seen the stacks like, of balance boards? Right. Yeah. It's crazy. Right. Grossed out What if they're like, you know, yeah. uh, everybody's got one of yeah. these. Because you know they're standing on it with, that, with their feet. Yeah, their yeah. feet are everywhere. And they're just rubbing all the skin flakes that come uh, out. Yeah, it's like at the bottom of your feet. Just yeah. Like, in that, just that like a pet egg. Right. Yeah, it's like a pet egg just Jeez. grinding away. Oh, it's like a pet egg. Yeah. Oh, you got the Parmesan cheese foot on your balance board. <laughs> uh, no! But how likely yeah. could there be some sort of revival for the Wii Fit balance board? It doesn't have to be Wii Fit, mm. but just for the balance board. I'm surprised it hasn't been done already, Everybody's actually, got it. Yeah. Everybody's got it. Or some like indie developer. Because it, cool it works with the Wii U, right? Yes. yes. I really yes. thought that was just going to carry over. Right. It was so successful. Right. So why yeah. not? You don't need you don't, you you don't need do. to buy a new one. Right. Just keep using the it one you got. It would have worked really well with Ring Fit too. You could have like checked your your weight right. progress. You and could everything. have had some sort of Wii, Wii Fit balance board, oh. Ring Fit yeah. integration. Oh, 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 oh. Push hundred percent. Right. I totally think Ring Fit's coming back. Oh, that's Ring soon. Fit was good actually. Yeah. I liked it's, Ring. It's too Love obvious Ring to even put on this list. I could yeah. see Ring Fit too. But that this integration with the balance board is very interesting. I think that's a good. That's a really good point. I don't know if the balance board will come back because I feel like it would have already by now. Mm. Mm. But I it's feel not like impossible. it might have a chance to come back. There's a chance. How much do I want it? I don't I really. Don't really want How much it. do you want it to come back and also tell you you're obese <laughs> while blowing up your meat yes. and going, yeah. bo, bo, no, and then you're, bo, it's like sweating because yeah. you're standing Look at you, on it. fatty. No. Yeah. Uh, how, I, I, I think it maybe is a little weird to recall hardware that's that old yeah yeah they if they do it maybe they have a new version of it i'm gonna say mm, it's i'm okay, gonna say a new version i think it's unlikely i think yeah. it's unlikely, unlikely. Yeah. okay now i'm gonna really shock you we have a couple gimmicks that are not from nintendo that maybe oh, they've been paying attention I'm shocked the connect is coming to switch first one did you have a playstation vita i did what did you think of the back touch on the Vita? Oh. What if what if your Switch 2 oh, was the same okay. form factor, but you could yeah, do a little, little back touch? Back a little back touch, yeah. What did we do with the back touch on the Vita? I hated the back touch. Because I didn't love it. Because there was a very specific spot where you could actually hold it without right. triggering the back touch. Mm. And then it would just interfere with your yes. controls. Yeah. It was like, I am on eggshells just holding this thing I to not it, activate it. Apart. I remember it interfering with Gravity Rush. I just yes. I don't remember what it did, but yeah, you had to hold Some it nonsense. really carefully. Yeah. Mm. 
That's great. That's that's not great. Not at all. It's I not. Have a, I didn't have a Vita. So. It's not great, but I could see it happening. Like yeah. all controllers that are coming out these days, yeah, these third party ones, all, all have and back stuff. paddles. Yeah, yeah that's and true. Right. I could see Nintendo's version of that being a touch. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the, it's just the back of the Joy-Con. Yeah. Or something like they re redo the Joy Con so there's some sort of back. Oh my god, that sounds. I do How hate it though because it? yeah, then you feel like you have to hold it a certain way, which is yeah. sometimes fine. But then sometimes you're in bed like lying weird, exactly. and your hands yeah, just your have to wrap right. weird. Right. right. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't want it, but I think they might do it. Is the thing. I think it's likely. Oh. Uh oh. All well, the way to likely. Wow. Likely in the sense of like. Something. It could happen. Yeah. yeah. It could happen. It could, that's what I'm saying. I don't think too. it is happening. But it could, could happen. happen. It, in yeah. this, it is in the re realm of potential reality. Because yeah. I don't see Nintendo doing back buttons. But I could see them doing a back touch. Okay. Yeah. They like the touch screen too. Yeah, they, they do. They do like a touch screen. How much do I want it? No. I don't want it. How likely is it? Somewhat. Somewhat. I, I don't want it in the version that we're thinking. But if they find a way where like it doesn't interfere yeah. at all. Maybe it's cool. Maybe it's cool, maybe it doesn't activate unless you want it to somehow. Yeah, fine. Only for certain parts fine. of games or if something? I, if I can forget that it's there, if it's not being used, fine. Okay. Okay, mm. that's fair. Next is something, this came up in our community recently, and a lot of people didn't even know that the PlayStation 2 had this feature, the best-selling system ever. Did you know that the controller for the PlayStation 2 had pressure-sensitive buttons? There were a handful of games that would register how hard you were pressing. Which, which buttons? Any of the, on the controller. Really? The, all those buttons were no, pressure sensitive. It's very cool. I played a couple That's of those games. That's very ahead of its time. Very, but it was a little bit obscure and like, again, not many people even knew. So what uses would that even have? So in like a driving game, yeah. like how yes. hard, but how hard you're pressing For a the button? button is like, how hard you're pressing on the gas. Mario Kart could right. be revolutionary. Imagine that. Nice, because you could press Mario like Kart should use triggers. I mean, now a lot of triggers. To drive. Some, some Not triggers buttons. do. That's, they do that's always Some buttons. triggers do have that. But Cramped this could, they could be, we, they're always looking to innovate in controllers. I like that idea. It's really cool, actually. Pressure sensitive buttons. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised. That like it'd be very hard to do. Yeah, I'm surprised it's possible. I'm surprised it's been done. This has been possible 20 years ago. Is the buttons then like very elevated so you no. have more room? This is to this is bizarre to me because like in a day and age where we're trying to get so wacky with controllers, like the PS5 right. controller now has haptic feedback yeah. and the yeah. adaptive triggers yeah. and everything, but all those front buttons they just have just normal buttons. They're just one. It's, it's just on just and off. Yes. Yeah. If we could this whole time have had those be interactive in different ways, How why are we not doing that? It just blew your mind. You have blown my mind a little bit. I want this. I do want I, yeah, this. Yeah, I want this. This is cool. I, yeah. I want like the most cool controller ever. Like I want like oh, all boy. the things. I want the oh, haptic. I uh -huh. want the buttons. This is a recipe want, for, like, you want the back touch, fine. I want like the, the little speaker that. Think of like <laughs> playing a game like Street Fighter, for example, with those buttons. You yeah. could do so many more combos now, depending or on smash. how. Or smash. Yeah. Yeah. How well, hard you press months. the buttons. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That could be cool. Strong punch or like light punch. Yeah. yeah. Depending on. So yeah. I want this a lot. I want this a lot. Somewhat likely. Maybe. Maybe they don't know about this either. I don't know. I've never <laughs> heard of it. Maybe they don't, kind of Maybe they don't know about my, this either. Yeah. The PlayStation like 2 wanna, had it. Well, the PS2 want, did it. Yeah. If they want to keep expensive. the cost down or something, like, yeah. this would be an easy thing for them to be like, no. Yeah, I guess it this. depends on how expensive it is. Yeah. So maybe like somewhat like that. Yeah. I, I think considering I hadn't heard about it until right now, probably not likely. <laughs> but I do want it. It's cool. Next. I don't know exactly the term for this, so I'm basically just going to say... Triggers like the PS5s. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like haptic. Yeah. 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 Oh, my gosh. Those oh, you mean haptic or like they actually have like well, motion and range? Yeah. This is, this is where you said that. I'm like, I'm not sure that's exactly the same it's thing. Like, yeah, like the, the range. But they have resist They can have yes. resistance, resistance to okay. them. And they can ha have they feedback. They have like feedback. Right. Okay. I mean, I would like it to have better triggers in general yes. because mm -hmm. I don't like just the little clicky triggers. Yeah. 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 I like to have... very satisfying. Uh, yeah. I mean, even like the GameCube ones. Yeah. Yes. So yes. Those, those are nice. Those, those, those and your are finger nice. fits much better than the right. little yes. grooves too. Right. But, I mean, I'm not a... I like the haptic actually. I like yeah. I'm playing Horizon and like feeling the bow. I think yes. it's nice. I think, I think it's really nice. Imagine playing it's a Zelda nice. game and feeling yeah. the bow. Or... It's quite immersive. It actually is pretty immersive. Yeah. The, the argument against this is mm. that it's such a trademark thing of the PS5, mm. they would just be seen as like, you just rip Copycat. that off. Copycat. Is it a and trademark And Nintendo hates doing something that's already been proven by Especially somebody else. for Sony. Yeah. I don't think they would want to risk, like you just, you just took that from Sony. That kind of sentiment? I, I kind of saw the PS5 controller, the way it innovated was taking a lot of cues from Nintendo and how mm. they innovated with their 
controllers okay. and their HD Rumble. Well, if they can find a way to say we did this first, yeah, then maybe then we're back. Love that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know. But if I want them that. to. I want them to do make the controller feel like really future proof. Just call it something else. There Just we go. Mar Mario's haptic uh -huh. feedback. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Mario's. If we could fold this Mario's into HD touch. Rumble. Somehow. Mario's touch. That there you go. Horrifying. Mario's back touch. Rumble. <laughs> oh <Yes>. no! <laughs> Creepy. So how much do we want this? Sounds like a lot. We want it a lot. Yeah. How likely it. is it? I think it's somewhat likely. That but they might be, need to. That there'll be something. Finish. Something. Be something, something new with something the triggers. There. Yeah, I think. Something I think, new yeah. with just the yeah. controllers. Mm -hmm. in general. Yeah. yeah. And then finally, last one. You knew it was coming. Connect. There's some little. Mm, I did know. Um, I did joke about that. Yeah. Some little camera that you put on your TV. I think Body that was just, tracking. This is, again, this is what you said earlier. It's been done before. Right. But in this case, it didn't work. Right. Like, it very much didn't but work. But that was a 15 years ago. ago? Maybe the technology has come a long way? Was it that long ago? I don't know. AI? Some sort of hmm. AI? No, stop. stop. <laughs> Please stop. I think having like a front facing camera on the Switch would be more likely than something like that. They could a, like read your face, the yeah. expressions of your uh -huh. face, maybe? I think that's more likely than, than sticking something yeah. on your TV yeah. Yeah. or something like that. I think they, kind of, was. They, they, they did learn a little bit from the sensor bar with Wii. Yeah. And like that kind of stuff because people, they realized, especially in Japan, they were telling us like people who had such small living quarters. Mm -hmm. Like they just didn't have like enough space. Yeah. Like you need to be a, a certain distance away. Yeah. It is. Here. It is yeah. restricting. TV. And then you got to be like in the view of it right. whenever you're playing. So it's just it's not, limiting. It's limiting. So, but your point about the front-facing camera is really yeah. That's not they, limiting because it's literally in your just, hands. Yeah. 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 Could be a fun thing. This yeah. is a double no for me. Double no. You don't want Big, it. Big fat double. On, no. Even on the front-facing camera. I'm expressionless when I play. There's nothing. <laughs> there's dead nothing inside. Yeah. Face, like, yeah. <laughs> There's nothing happening. <laughs> I mean, it's never a good view when you open your camera app yeah. and it's like, front oh facing god. and you're like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> so you thought we were done. There's oh, one I, only, I only thought that because you said that was the last There's one. There's a bonus gimmick oh. that was never actually released. Okay. But we, did, yeah. but we did hear about it. Okay. The Wii Vitality Sensor. Do you remember this? Do you remember this? Mr. Iwata showed it off. It's a picture of Mr. Awada with it's, his finger in the little thing. It's ringing a bell. Feeding into the Wii remote that would actually take like your your vital signs oh and my transfer God. it into and, the game. And the demo for it was like you play a scary game, like oh, a horror game, right. uh -huh. and then it would read your vitals and it would like somehow work It would work adapt into the, the game. game based on mm. what's going Ooh. on in your body. Like, and that never came out? No. no. Well, but I kind of want to play conference. that. Yeah. That sounds like it would do really well on Twitch. Yeah. Yeah. Is it that you, you know they would be dying to find a way to make this work? I, I want know. that game. Mr. Watt is like legacy of a vitality <laughs> sensor. Yeah, that is an iconic photo of him. Iconic. Yeah, hmm. he looked like a little bit hospitaly, but it's definitely iconic. I feel like there's 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 a weird emotional attachment that Nintendo now has mm. with that vitality sensor because it was his thing. Can I one up you? Of course. We already have that on the Switch. With have what? you played Ring Fit? <laughs> Yeah, they do have the thing where you after can you put do it, up it your... you put your thumb on the IR right. reader. But, I, but, but that's not as you are playing. That's after. after. It's like, it's like that's you take true, a break but to it do does this. do your heart rate. Right. Yeah, it does do your heart rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Would, would they take that a step further and have some other kind of accessory that would? I mean, I mean, you will they do like build that into the Joy-Con where do... you're holding it and it's taking your pulse somehow while you're, while you're holding that, it? There you go. Yeah. yeah why not? I mean, treadmills do that. Why can't the Joy-Con? Yeah, you hold on to the handle. Luigi's Mansion Four is. Is a true horror Update. game? It's doing so something horror. while it's, cause it's too scary. It's, you know. Or it could be something like, it, it tracks like you're having a, like you're laughing or something like that in your heart rate. I mean, I don't know. Like, yeah. I don't want to be other. too tracked. No. I don't want to be monitored have, the whole time. Uh, yeah. The, the front camera on, my heart rate's being <laughs> tracked. It's, it's, it's occasionally stabbing your finger for your blood. Yeah. My GPS location's there constantly are some pinging. Creepy, <laughs> creepy implications. Yeah, Mrs. Sakurai is getting all that stuff for his, for his mm -hmm. next Smash game, which is just like printing humans. I don't want this, but I can't rule it out. I'd say it's, it's somewhat it's likely. It's somewhat likely. Yeah. yeah. They love the Will the IR reader come back? That's my question. You didn't talk about that one. The least the used yeah, Nintendo not, gimmick not of really all used. time. You need a it was used sandwich eating. in 13 games. Ring Fit was good. Across the entire Switch yeah, library. Yeah. 13 games. Use the IR camera. Yes. Were they all first party games? You didn't. No. No. I did a video on them recently. About half of them were first party. And each mm. use was actually very unique. Okay. 
There oh, was, we, we did that security. The, the security what was yeah. that one. Yeah, the security, the security one. camera. Yeah. yeah. In Resident Evil Revelations, you can reload your gun by going like oh, this. Oh, that's neat. Oh, that's, that's kind of cool. In what was that? Not Splatoon game. The uh, the other free to play one. Ninja. Yes. Yeah. Oh. You use it to scan in code cards on the trading packs to get oh. items in the game. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. Let's bring that back. While Let's we're bring at. it back. Yeah. Why not? Might as, might you already well. got it. We love yeah. it. Might as well. Iconic. The security <laughs> game, though. We really need that. We definitely that, need that. That was something else. Well, there All you right, have it. There you have it. That's the list. Yeah. We figured out the Switch, too. We built, we built a it. dream yeah. Switch. We did. It's like customizing your car, you know? Yeah. We want, we want, maybe we want this. Maybe you do that. We customize want that. your Switch. It's time to sell your mm. Nintendo you put stock. What you want. <laughs> that would be cool. Oh. Oh. Make your own Switch. Switch oh. your way. I'll switch your... There's a tagline right there. Uh -huh. <laughs> switch you. Just kidding. You can take that oh. Nintendo. Switch you. Nice. Oh, no, no. We can't do that again. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. We'll thank you so much. We'll have to have you in person next time yes. in the studio. Well, I technically am in person right you now. Are. You are. Here <laughs> we can touch real, if you want. Real, I am, I am real, here. Real but I'm saying... Next I will come. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Talk. I will. Thank you for doing my podcast. Yeah. And we're back. <laughs> never know. You never know. <laughs> I never when, know when we're, we're back. We're back when we're back. We're back when we're back. That's right. <laughs> uh, great conversation. It was interesting to see, like, which things each of us was either excited for or very much not excited for yeah yeah i like how we did the gimmick itself and then how likely is it to come back just getting into nintendo's head a little bit and how much we wanted that thing to come back i think collectively all of us like in general not not just you me and wood but like the world wants street pass to come back but there are also a lot of gimmicks that like is very likely for nintendo to focus on that we're just like, don't do it, please. We don't want this. <laughs> you can really argue either side of for or against gimmicks. Like yeah. on one hand, you can say, well, you know, this form factor has been so great. People, people know it. They associate it with you. They love it. So just stick with that. You know, put as much power in as you can. And boom, you got a new generation. On the other side, there's no like mainstream competitor yet. But it does feel like it's kind of mounting where, you know, it started with the Steam Deck and now there's so many of these handheld PCs and now there's rumblings, yeah. oh, it was Xbox, sniffing around the handheld space. Mm -hmm. it, it could be wise to put a Nintendo twist on this hardware to kind of future-proof it. And exactly. again, get out of that red ocean to use a Mr. Iwata term and kind of yeah. create some blue ocean for yourself by saying, well, Yes, we still have this form factor, but we have this other wrinkle that nobody else has. And that paired with this great software that only we have gives us this competitive advantage. Yeah. If they want to have as long of a console generation as they had for Switch, they will have to do something like this. Um, how they do it and how they balance it with the just the strength and, and how clean and great switch is is going to be very hard um but yeah if if they want to kind of maintain their their footing um with switch two that that's what they're gonna need to do they're gonna have to put some sort of innovation uh around this to make it to make it last as long as it did cardboard accessories here we come uh, oh we, no <laughs> we of course asked our patreon subscribers <laughs> what they thought about all this and they had some thoughts. Uh, Kai X said, I would like to see Nintendo release a console that can wirelessly connect to the docking station. Oh. This would allow you to play the game on your TV while using the handheld screen as a second screen, kind of like the Wii U did. This would allow for some really great gameplay mechanics like we saw with the original Mario Maker. Mm. I don't know if this is technically feasible, cool, but I think though. this is the answer to the dual screen conversation we had with Wood, where how do you yeah. make it work both ways i think this is a great idea again i have no idea if, if it's feasible idea. yeah what what technology is, is required to do this or even if it's a wired connection so you can uh, have a dual screen maybe right, not that's wired, fine no. too uh, but i mean be, like i, I like that. the idea i do like the idea a lot of some sort of dual screen something um if, if you choose it when it's the feels right and it's the right software or whatever but 
Yeah, I like this a lot. This is great. Yeah. Uh, Stephen Kowalski says, I would like to see closer and better integration with other devices like smartphones. Give me mm. an even better version of the PlayStation app that lets me see and manage storage, purchase games, see and use screenshots and recordings, manage console settings, and global accessibility options. Give me complete gameplay session tracking, user profile control, etc. I don't need any of that interface in the console itself. Let the console do games, external app... <laughs> can control everything else through associating the console with the My Nintendo account. There were a lot of people who rallied around the idea of something on your phone is, mm -hmm. is the hot new gimmick. I do love the PlayStation app and the Xbox app on my phone, I have to say. Like, whenever I purchase a game, whenever I go and like clean up my storage i have a digital only ps5 so i'm always you know removing games to download new ones i only do it for my phone i don't ever do it for my console mm -hmm. and that way when i turn the console on to play that game it's like loaded up ready to go like downloaded so i like this idea a lot i think that there's other pieces of tech in our lives and everyone's lives whether it's a computer a phone a, an ipad or something that you can use to your advantage, you know, and, and not have to bog down the hardware itself with a ton of, you know, UI stuff. So I like this. Yeah. Nintendo has not done great with phone apps, though. So they need to do a better job with that for sure. Well, here's another app related idea from The Natrix. I think it would be interesting to see Nintendo create smartphone apps that connect more with Switch 2 games. They've created a handful of standalone smartphone games, but I think it would be fun if in a smartphone game like Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, you could visit your campsite in the console edition of Animal mm. Crossing. Another idea could be to have a smartphone app for a game in the Fire Emblem series where there could be extra social sim mini games in the app that would carry over to the main game. Just an idea. We did see a very small bit of this, like where you could buy Splatoon weapons through the app, mm -hmm. but I... I I, I like this idea, too, where there's some extension of the main game that you can also do on your phone. Because, yes, you know, it is uh, anytime, anywhere with anyone, but but sometimes it isn't. And sometimes you just have a phone in front of you. So that, that's a fun way to keep the game going. I think it'd be fun, too, to have, like, the Nintendo mobile game ecosystem be more connected to its console games. Because right now they feel super separate and, like... It also feels like the mobile games aren't meeting their full potential yet still um, after all these years. So maybe this is a way to make it feel more integrated and, and like, you know, bigger than just sort of what they've been doing um, so far with mobile games. So, yeah. yeah. One more idea from Ninja11. Asymmetrical multiplayer on the Wii U with games like Nintendo Land were so fun and I really want more of that. However, I don't want the annoying form factor of the Wii U, so instead I want them to do something like Jackbox Party Pack does and use the mm. player's smartphone as an independent screen. I think they can develop the hardware or software to on the phone to allow for your phone as a controller with a screen that only you can see. So we kind of is saw this. Is this everybody one-two switch? It, it kind of is, but maybe if you put that on a better game, everybody would have a better time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again... There is something to say that about like all the other tech that people just have. Right. And what you can do to take advantage of that. And that way you're not like asking them to buy another accessory or whatever else, you know, like you're just letting them use something they already own. So right. That, yeah, right. that makes sense. So there was there was also a huge contingent of people that said Street Pass, obviously. Yeah. There was not an insignificant number of people that said glasses free 3D, although I oh. think we all agreed that's less likely. Yeah. And then there was just a big group that said no no gimmicks. Just, just keep it clean. Know, put 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 as much power as you can afford in there and, and let's keep yeah. it rolling and, and I'm good. I gotta say, yeah, I the see, word gimmick, not a good word, not good connotations, yeah. but something that game de and specifically Japanese game developers, they love this love. word. Love. They love this word. Love it. They think it sounds fun. You know, I, I think for them it's very like like lighthearted fun. But for right. us it's like a it, it means like something that you it's very easily throw away. Um, and I remember so. we would have conversations with them and like through the translator, like around an E3 of like, maybe don't use that word. Maybe that's not as great a word as you think it is. And they were often like kind of thrown off by that where I yeah, think they, they, they thought it was, oh yeah, people love gimmicks, but it's like, eh, it, it means it's something that's kind of yeah. cheap and a little, would, little distraction. Um, 
they would use the word gimmick to describe like a core gameplay mechanic. It's like, no, this is not a gimmick. This is yeah. a core, very important, very fun, um, very unique gameplay mechanic that you made. Like, don't undersell it by calling it a gimmick. And they were like, what do you mean? So yeah. it was very interesting to have to have like that kind of discussion with them about the connotation of the word gimmick. Right. But in this case, like these are these are not like the central focus of the hardware. Right. So and, and in some cases they truly are gimmicks where it's like That's right. Yeah. Use it use it once. It's cool. Never HD really Rumble. see anybody take advantage of it again. Yeah. <laughs> no cacao. <laughs> right, right. Okay. Uh very fun discussion with Wood there. Let's move on to our news segment, which is Again, the news has picked up after a very slow start this year. I've been enjoying the news segments. Let's start with this this interesting story that happened late last week about Disney doing this big investment with Epic Games to develop Mm -hmm. a persistent universe. So they're investing one and a half. Weird phrasing, don't you think? Yeah, they're investing one and a half billion dollars in Epic, uh, and they're going to work together to create new games and this so-called entertainment universe. I read all of these announcements very carefully. I read all of the ensuing coverage coverage very carefully. I'll be honest, I don't exactly know what their intention is here. Um, There's a line here that says, uh, consumers can play, watch, shop, and engage with content characters and stories from Disney. Okay. Um, is it's it just vi- like a theme park, like a like a Disneyland I, inside of a video game? That's is kind that of what that is that that's kind of where my mind went. Was is, is this like a virtual Disneyland? Yeah, which could be cool. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think that's a bad idea. Again, you know, people have been dancing around this metaverse idea, and nobody's really come up with much of anything that's good. Right. But if it's that. I mean, that's a good way to extend, you know, what they have with theme parks because the parks are cool, but not everybody can go. But if you can get some sort of, you know, one-time pass or subscription and have a good time doing Disney stuff in this really cool, you know, virtual space that they've made, that could be neat. Yeah. I imagine like Roblox, but with Disney characters and IP where you can like hang out with your friends inside of it somehow and, and play yeah. little mini games or... Um, you know, do little activities, but it's really like a social gathering space that's themed with Disney IP. That's what I imagine. I don't know if that's true or not because the phrase persistent universe is very weird. Why would they call it that? I don't know. I don't understand that. Um, But if if that's the case, like that sounds cool because I'm a Disney fan and I love anything Disney. So like to be able to experience your favorite, you know, Disney stuff and, a fun way with your friends and and be able to do it without having to like actually go to Disneyland, which is expensive and hard to do. Like it'll be fun. I think, you know, Disney and Epic already did have a pretty big relationship. I think where the unreal engine, you know, that gets used for a lot more movies than I think people maybe realize. Mm-hmm. And, and especially yeah. for like the CG heavy shows, <laughs> like star Wars, like that was always what you would hear. Like they would film in that dome, they called the volume. And then like all of the backgrounds were mostly generated in Unreal Engine. So, um, you know, this is obviously a big next step for them, but it's not like they're unfamiliar with each other. And then we have this quote from Bob Iger saying, when I saw Gen Z and Gen Alpha and millennials, thanks for not leaving out the millennials, the amount of time <laughs> they were spending in terms of total media screen time on video games, it was stunning, equal to what they spend on TV and movies. The conclusion I've reached, we have to be there. The kids these days, they love those video games. Yes. <laughs> the kids these days. Get off Got my it. lawn, the kids these days. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get into our latest batch oh, yes. of Switch 2 rumors. And again, we, we, we often take a light touch with rumors. Right. But in this case, it does feel like something's imminent. Real. So let you know, take these all with a grain of salt. But I think it's it's fun and worthwhile to talk about them. So our first one is from Nate the Hate, who is somebody who I think we agree has a lot of credibility in the space. Mm-hmm. Sure. When we did our episode with Jeff Grubb, he said he's somebody that he looks for. So that gave him even more credibility in right. my mind. And he says that Nintendo will announce the Switch 2 in March. Right. So I think That's a lot of been, people... We've been saying that all along anyway, that was, too. That was also what we shared in our predictions episode. So I think a lot of people are looking at, you know, 
if there is a direct this week, what actually is the content of it? Right. If they're just grasping at straws to put together, you know, a, a basic presentation, then that could really signal, okay, nothing more to see here. This is what's House going to cleaned. this is yeah. what's going to ride out the rest of the life cycle of the switch as its own thing right. in the marketplace. And then the table is set for an announcement shortly. Yeah, and if it's a partner showcase, as many have predicted um, for this week, that's another signal too. Like we're done with all the first party stuff that's on, you know, on Switch. They've kind of tweeted out a bunch of stuff around that. And if it's a partner showcase, if it's related to the Microsoft something, um, then that could be sort of the last thing to talk about before we move on to Switch 2. It all makes sense. So there was another rumor that came out, which is from Universo Nintendo, which I believe it might be a Portuguese. I, I, I shouldn't have said that. Mm. I could be completely wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, but they had a number of things that they were claiming, which was that Switch 2 will have backwards compatibility for physical and digital games with original Switch games. This was interesting. Developers can enhance original Switch games to take advantage of the added processing power. Okay. Uh, this, pers uh, this this outlet also says that a direct would be this week with the reveal coming next month. And then also that there's a Pokemon presentation this month. I think we all knew that because it's Pokemon Day coming up at right. the end of the month. So yes. a little bit more here on, as far as hardware features. And nothing here I would say is really crazy outside the realm of, of possibility. So I think it's like, yeah, this, this seems reasonable. This, you know, I think that the backwards compatibility de debate rages on, but there's a lot of yeah. reasons for them to do it. This point about enhancing switch one games, that would be, you know, to, 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 to my counterpoint, to my devil's advocate of, you know, do people really want to go back and play those old games once they've got the new thing? If right. if they are getting enhanced and they don't feel like there's this big gulf, you know, if they're getting some sort of a frame rate boost or, or a resolution boost, kind of like what happened with the PS4 to PS5, then maybe you can make an even tighter link. I think that's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Or you get the d deluxe versions of something where they add like a little bit extra, just a teeny little bit, but the the core game is enhanced graphically so that that's another way that nintendo has done it in the past and could potentially be what they do yeah for, the, for this transition i i i'm coming to the point where i say this like every week but you know knowing that we could potentially be like a month away from a reveal i, I still continue to be really amazed that there have not been more leaks and more substantial leaks, like as in, hey, here's a picture of this thing <laughs> you yeah. know, th that somebody just took. Like, it just feels like these days it is like almost impossible to mm -hmm. prevent that sort of thing when there's this much yeah. interest and this much scrutiny. And and at this point, with the thing getting out, obviously for people to make games on, it's it, the pressure's got to be building. You know, knowing Nintendo, like they have the most you know extreme measures in place to predict it, but right. sometimes you just can't help it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it, you know, it is important for people to stay on Nintendo's good side. So these trusted partners are probably also very careful. But yeah, it, it's true. It's like when we've not seen like even a sniff of like what this thing could potentially look like. I imagine like some ridiculous scenario where Nintendo like put them in all black boxes. <laughs> like they're all dev units, but in like locked inside of some yeah, like yeah. black box and you just, you have like wires sticking out of it and that's what you're using to develop stuff but you can't see it. I mean, they they probably wouldn't, I mean, they, that's something they would do. You know, they it wouldn't be out of the out of the question for him to do, for them to do something like that extreme. But yeah, it is amazing that there's not been any sort of significant leaks yet yeah so things are happening and again by the time this is out who knows this this direct may have happened and we may have more of a of a feeling of what the future may hold but it's still yeah. fun to to look at these another thing that's happening the same day this podcast comes out is the xbox business update the big business update has been on everybody's mind for well over a week at this point so phil spencer initially was a little bit vague about what this would be and people were wondering, like, 
are you going to have like a physical press conference? Is it going to be like a Nintendo Direct style video? So they're actually using the official Xbox podcast. And they'll have Phil, Sarah Bond, and Matt Booty on talking about uh, updates on the Xbox business. They shared this in this extremely somber tweet, which <laughs> I d- looks like somebody's going to a funeral. I don't know. Please yeah, join- it's very Please dark. join us for a special edition of the official Xbox podcast. This is like the very special episodes of the sitcoms we used to watch growing up where somebody gets <laughs> yeah. caught up in with the wrong kids That's and bad right. things happen. That's right. So this is happening uh, the 15th at noon, our time. And yeah, this is where they're going to lay out sort of the future of what the Xbox business is. And we'll finally put all of these rumors to rest as we actually find out what's going on. Yeah, yeah. They they have taken a very somber tone overall. First of all, calling it a business update (laughs) is already very serious. Sounds like very, you know, not not a fun like let's talk about the new the new games that are coming the new cool things that we got going on it's very like very serious and then yes they have this um sort of this official podcast with phil sarah and matt to share updates and it it just it just feels like it's not just me though this looks like a bummer right yeah it's like an executive hour like this is gonna be like some serious talk with your dad not like (laughs) let's let's have fun and like talk about video games but um, yeah, it, it is interesting that it, we were talking about this a little while ago, but like there is all these speculation and rumors like, is is this connected somehow to the Nintendo, you know, third party showcase? Is this where they're going to finally announce, you know, um, Hi-Fi Rush and Pentiment, you know, previous Xbox exclusives coming to Switch and then they will then be shown in this not announced not confirmed third party um, direct that's later in the afternoon. Like, are these things connected? What's going on? Um, I think all of that is still very open to interpretation and, and people are guessing of, of what's happening. The tone of it is is so interesting because yes, there's been all this tooth gnashing from the community of and all these rumors that they're reacting to, but you'd think they can find a way to put a positive spin on this, unless it's literally like we're shutting it all down, which it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't seem like they are that, you know, that people were saying that there was an Xbox town hall and feel recommitted that they're staying in hardware. So it doesn't sound like it's that bad, but I do wonder once this thing gets going, like, are they going to try and, because I mean, if it's game, if if it's game, yeah, if it's games coming to other platforms later, I mean, you can, you can spin that both ways. You can say, Hey, Xbox is still the, the place to play these first for and, and play them, you know, as part of your Game Pass subscriptions. And that's great. And now if you're one of these other platform holders, you can actually play these games for the first time. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a little bit puzzled by the uh, all black, um, no exclamation points um, <laughs> approach here. But I guess we'll see once Serious they actually font. do it, what, what they're uh, able to do with it. Yeah. So, so yeah, so they... It's come out that, you know, the worst fears of them getting out of hardware are not the case. And I think some cooler heads have prevailed as right. far as talking about what this likely is. <clears throat> and and most people who would who would know and, and seem to have some sort of inside source are saying, yeah, it really just is, you know, a selection of games that will yeah. come to other platforms later than they do on xbox or there's some older Mm -hmm. games that are all have already been out for years now or or for a while that will start to come out on these other platforms which honestly i think is a really smart approach because you know they are in a very you know the the video game industry is just now this very high risk space and they exist at kind of the highest end of that risk where We have hardware. We have a whole platform that we're responsible for. We've spent billions of dollars buying all these studios and we're investing hundreds of million dollars a pop potentially to make games for it. So even though they are Microsoft and they have, you know, more money than almost anybody, it doesn't mean that they're not concerned about the risk of that. Like you don't, you don't get to be as big as Microsoft by just throwing money around and not caring if it returns or not. And yeah. I think that this business, like 
everybody's coming to this realization in different ways that like, yeah, the AAA video game business is a really bad business to be in. So it's we really need risky. to, yeah. right. So we need to come with, come up with a way to get a bit more ground under our feet and, and not feel like we're living like life or death with every game mm-hmm. release. And you've seen Sony do it, putting games on PC that's another thing that fans were upset about, but ultimately has worked out really well. Those games have sold well. There have been some performance issues on, on the PC, but I think generally, you know, people have enjoyed um, those and they've been pretty embraced by the PC community. And ultimately it's helping them to spread out these costs and, and get a little bit back on these major, major investments that could, you know, frankly, submarine the whole operation if one just doesn't yeah. do well. So you know, they're already on PC. So I think it makes sense. And and I don't think, you know, the talk of like, oh, I'll, I'll never buy another Xbox game again, or I'm, I'm, I'm selling my Xbox. Like, I, I, I don't know why people would do that if that's what this actually is. Yeah, I guess the only other thing is, can they please clarify to us, you know, what is their core proposition for yeah. Xbox? <laughs> you know, because... I think that is still a point of confusion for people. They don't know where it fits in with the other consoles that they own, other entertainment options that they have. So, you know, if they could just tell us and clarify for us what that is and and just like make us feel comfortable with how they're going to support that vision in the future, I think we're good. But I don't think it's like dire straits, like this is the end, you know, for Xbox. Right, right. But it does feel like, you know, yet another pivotal moment for them, really a a big moment for the industry overall. So uh, I'm definitely going to be watching this closely. And, um, you know, we we own every platform. So like for us, it kind of does like, well, if it's on this or it's on that, it's like, well, we'll play it no matter what. But there's a lot of people who who don't have that luxury. So I I understand you know, being invested in one platform more than another. So, and they do seem interested in really like, like we're not, I think from their perspective, like we're less interested in what the industry is going to be like in a year and, but maybe more in like five years or 10 years, 10 years. And like, let's be the first to get to the new place so that we can reestablish ourselves as a leader. Cause we're, we're sure as heck not, not that now. Right, right. It's very future looking. Maybe that's why people are uncomfortable. It's like, I'm not ready for that future. Um, But they're trying to predict what that could potentially be. So you got to give them props for that. Yeah. And, you know, the the CEO of Microsoft, um, Satya Nadella, he strikes me from from everything I've seen and read about him as being like a pretty pragmatic guy who Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I think he gave the team a lot of opportunities to turn things around. But I think they just reached a point where it's like, hey, let's be honest, like this, this isn't working, what we're doing here. So what what are you going to do now? So I think that's maybe the kick in the pants that Phil Spencer got maybe, you know, after, after they said, maybe, maybe you get one last holiday. Yeah, and we'll see what happens. And that's holiday. like, mm, didn't didn't happen. So now it's time to move on to, to plan B or whatever plan this ends up being. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting time overall, I think, for the industry. So we'll see what happens on Thursday. Yeah. All right. Let's get into some games we are playing. Got some new stuff. You've been playing through the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth demo. I have. It's so good. I was really shocked by how robust um, this demo is. But I've been playing through it. Before I fell ill, I was... (laughs) I was playing it a lot, and then I, I didn't play yesterday because I was asleep. Um, but it is a really cool in, a way to kind of introduce you or reintroduce you to some of the characters that you may have forgotten about or may have forgotten, you know, how you your relationship is with certain characters. And it's done through this um, flashback that Cloud is having. He's like sort of telling his the group that he's with now about this first time or, or early early days when him and Sephiroth were on a mission together. Um, they even meet like a young Tifa and they, they are trying to like, um, you know, they're in this like little mountain town trying to figure out what's going on with these reactors. And you just see this different side of all of these characters. You, you see a very interesting kind of early relationship between Sephiroth and Cloud and also between Cloud and Tifa and Tifa and Sephiroth. And um, it's really 
good. Like it's a really great way to like summarize some of the story. And at this point, you know, with this remake, I feel like the story is so far from the original game. Like, I don't even know what's going to happen next. And so I'm like really in on the, I'm really in on this because I'm like, oh yeah, I, I, I don't think you can confidently say like the story is going to remain the same as the original because it's not. Um, so like I'm, I'm getting reinvested in all the characters. The game is absolutely beautiful as well. Like I, I forgot how beautiful this game is, I guess. I don't know why, but I was just like floored by how great it looked. Um, and it was cool because in this part, in this part of the demo that you get to play, you're sort of like out outside of Midgar or like outside of the industrial part of the, the world. And you're like in nature and you're kind of climbing up this canyon and um, having this like very natural environment. I'm like, this game, it looks amazing. Like, oh my gosh. Um, so I'm just like, I'm like really, I don't know, like pleasantly surprised, I guess. And, and it's making me like super hyped for this game. Cause I, I think I forgot about how much I loved um, part one of this. And um, now that I'm playing the demo, I'm like, I'm so ready to play this. I'm so, I'm so ready to play this. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, I had been um, doing a bit of saber rattling for a while of like, well, maybe I won't play this because my knowledge of the original game, I, I never played the original game all the way through. So I didn't have that connection to it, but I'm I'm sort of falling victim to the hype as well. I haven't played the demo, but so I, good. I am going to play the full game, and I'm curious. Like, it have you had a sense for like the open worldness of it? That seems to be what they're indicating is like a major thing. Yeah, right now in the demo, you are pretty um, limited. It kind of feels like Final Fantasy 16, where it feels like you're in this big open world, but you're quite limited in the path that you could take. Like I try to go this different way and like it like trigger this thing where Tifa comes over and says, oh, you can't go that way. The bridge is out. You have to go the other way. Um, so it, it is quite like you are directed to go certain places, but the world feels big and open and like you can explore it. Um, so I hope that that is something that shows up in the, the main game, but in the demo itself for now, at least I, I can't really like openly explore anything yeah. like that. I was getting worried about the story at the end of the first game. It was just getting into some confusing stuff that I was like, I'm not sure I know exactly what happened here. <laughs> so I definitely yeah. want to do a refresher on that before I start this. There's also that little bit of content that they released um, with that other character. Uh, y Yuffie? Yuffie? Is that her name? Oh, yes, yes, yes. That's right. And we were looking, because we, we didn't play that right when it came out, and we were looking at it recently of like, how do you get that? And it seems extremely confusing about confusing. how you actually yeah. get that content. Like, I'm, do I need to rebuy this game on the PS5? I, I don't actually know. That could be a good way to get back into it because, yeah, like the battle system, I remember the battle system was great. I don't remember how it is. I'm sure this game has a tutorial, so it's fine, but... Um, I, I feel like I need to do a, a little bit of prep to get to get ready for this game. Battle system is so good, but hard. Like I was like, oh, this is a way harder than I remember it to be. I was like, oh, I need to like brush up on this battle system. It's how does it compare complex. with with your thoughts on uh, Final Fantasy 16, since that's somewhat still fresh ish in your mind? It's better than that for sure. Um, it's more, it's more like strategic, which is what I like yeah, about it. Right. And you can do a lot of things with your, like you can do a lot of like dual attacks and you can change your stances kind of thing to do like different, um, different kinds of moves. Like it, you're stronger in this stance, but like slower, you know? So yeah, it, it's good. It's really fun, but it still feels very like action, action packed and not like, you know, slow turn based or anything yeah, like that. But yeah. I was just like, this is hard. There's a lot going on. Like I had the commands up on my screen. I'm like, there's a lot of different commands here that I need to like understand. Um, but it's really fun. Cool. Well, that's great. We're not, I mean, we're not far from this game at all. It's like a, a matter of weeks. I can't believe it. <gasps> I better get going. I have to finish it like a dragon. Yes. Yeah, so our next so. game is like a dragon. I have I'm continued to play now. that. I'm very behind. 
I yeah. looked at just a, a a listing of chapters to see like where where am I in this game, and I'm I'm a little bit more than halfway now. How many which, chapters total are there? I'm not going to tell you. I don't want to put that. We're doing a whole spoiler cast on this game. There'll okay. be plenty of time to talk about the number of chapters and what happens in all the chapters. Where am I? I don't know where you are, but I have hit a point where there have been some pretty dramatic changes. In, uh-huh. And I'm, I'm, I'm dodging spoilers big time for, for this. I'll, I'll be very vague. But I've, I've hit a point where kind of the, the structure... And, and what I'm doing in the game has changed significantly. There has been a change of location. Um, Ichiban is no longer the main guy that I am with now. And we are kind of exploring this other character in a pretty detailed way that I'm liking a lot. Um, it's kind of banking on the series history and kind of calling back to some points of some things that happened earlier in the series. And it's really effective because the, the series is a lot older than I think people might realize. Like I was, I was, I was mentioning that to you earlier. I was like, I think this series is like almost 20 years old. Cause I remember the first game coming out on PlayStation two and I played the first game on PlayStation two. And it was such a, like it was viewed as such an oddity then of like, why are they even bothering to localize this? Some people were saying, like, why are they putting all these resources in this weird niche Japanese game and look at what it's become? So yeah. they're kind of able to pay off these bigger story moments that have this nostalgic feel because I think there actually at this point is some nostalgia around the earlier moments of the series. So they're doing some really good things with that. And it's also just like a good point, you know, if you're halfway through the game, it's a nice point to just give people a little refresher on everything or like a breather on everything they've been doing, take a little break from that and um, you know, kind of reset for the, for what's probably a big push at the end. So that's been great and neat. And I, I I literally don't know what's going to happen next, which is a fun place to be before I did that. I stumbled upon something which was really fun and funny that I had to tell you about, which is this, um, dating app mini game oh my gosh, I which i think you can get a lot earlier in the game i think you just have to walk to the right part of the map to trigger it but and i mean this game you know we talked about them a lot last week like this game has some super built out mini games like this is not yeah. one that is to the level of the animal crossing island but basically you run into this like weird old lady who's made this dating app and she's like you should you should test this out for me and she's like shows you how to do it but you, you have to like create a profile like you would on an actual dating app. And a lot of it's just like, it's just straight up lying. It's like, yes, I'm a, I'm a professional athlete. That's me. <laughs> Ichiban. You're a baseball bat. <laughs> you just straight up lie about it. And then you choose, like, you can like talk to these different girls and you kind of get a sense of like, of like, Oh, maybe this is a good fit. Maybe this is a good fit. And then you get into these like kind of like co- actual like text conversations where like you can choose what the response is, but then you have a limited amount of time to actually, like they, they make you input buttons on the controller as if you were actually texting. Oh boy. And like, it's like, like if you're actually texting with somebody, you get frustrated if they're just taking forever to type. That's so they're, true. they'll just be like, you're taking too long. I don't care. Or if you mess it yeah. up, like the words come out all gibberishy and she's like, oh, what's, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Oh no, that's embarrassing. <laughs> it's funny. Like they've they've really seemed to have like translated like that experience into this the game. Anxiety but... of texting someone that you may want to go on a date with. Right, right. And, yeah. and, and and you know, as the game does a good job with, like they make this bigger point of like, yeah, like a lot of these other positives about yourself, like you have no way of conveying in a text exchange so you so you really have to like play it up or play this character to get any sort of interest at all so it's a very like insightful little mini game that they have i want i want to do more of it when i'm back in playing as um ichiban because it was really really hilarious i love it (laughs) i love the mini games and just like the really out there extras that they put in this game because it is something that you don't have to do but they put so much care and love into all of this and it's many times very lighthearted, and and the story itself is quite serious yeah so having this these moments of levity is is always like a welcome thing in these games and they do that so well they balance it so well 
I also now have a lot more characters that I can choose from for my party yeah. than I did last time. I've got, there's maybe like one or two out of, I think, what's available that I don't have yet, but everybody else I have. So there's this fun feeling of like, oh, the group's all here and I can sort of pick and choose who I want. And now I have yeah. more jobs that are available that I'm mixing and matching. So like um, Eric, who's a character that we were talking about before, who neither of us really liked, I've completely just kicked benched him. To him. The, I benched him completely. Yeah. And now I'm rolling with some of the, the classic characters from yeah. the last game, which yeah. is great. But um, yeah, I, I'm... I'm having a great time with this game. I've been playing it for a number of weeks now, but I've like, I kind of like already don't want it to end yeah. is where I'm at. And, and it, I, I really can't stress, like I, I have no clue where, like where the story is headed. Like so far it is not, there's been lots is, of twists and turns. It is not obvious. Yeah. There are a lot of twists. Like, I don't know like, do we know who the, the main bad guy is yet? I, I don't like, think we, yeah. They're kind of signaling. It could be this one person, but I don't know. That could be a misdirect. Yeah. And there's some it's other very things. very mysterious. And there's some other things that they establish at the beginning of the game, too, that's like, oh, they haven't come back to that in a while, but that seemed important. I'll bet mm -hmm. that's going to come back in a big way soon. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, 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 true. it's extremely well done. Yes. Last thing here is, so, you know, we had these long flights to and from New York from the West Coast. And, you know, we both experienced this, this strange feeling of like, wow, there's not like the the big switch game of the moment is kind of yeah. nothing like there kind of there isn't is nothing one. so we had this this strange feeling of like gosh what are we actually going to play on this flight and we ended up just dabbling our way through a lot of different things but i ended up landing on um a game that i bought last year and i've just been sitting on i just hadn't had the chance to play it i was like aha perfect it's the metal gear solid master collection which is the collection of the first three games um, that they re-released and it released to some pretty mixed reviews. Like people had a lot of issues with how the, you know, the games were handled and brought over and especially the switch version, which is what I was playing. Like people didn't seem to love that, but I'm playing uh, just the original game, Metal, Metal Gear Solid, which it's been at this point a really long time since I played that game. Um, but it completely holds up in ways that honestly really surprised me. And I know that, Last week, I had some uh, unfriendly things to say about uh, Hideo Kojima. Kojima? <laughs> Today, I'm here to say that this game is an all-time classic. Wow. And if I think about the game, the big games of 1998, Metal Gear Solid 1 or Ocarina of Time, I might choose Metal Gear Solid. As, if, if I was to choose one of those Ocarina. games to play today... Like oh, this... I'm definitely choosing Ocarina. Okay. I might, I might disagree, but... Really? like. Aside bad. from a few details with the camera, like everything about this feels like super modern, super well done. Um, obviously the graphics are, you know, PS1 level graphics, but everything they were doing with the camera angles and the presentation just feels so slick and so on point. And this was kind of my point about Death Stranding was like, now he has no limitations really. But I think he's somebody who does his best work with some limitations. Mm. So with this game, he had the limitations of the hardware. Um, you know, he couldn't, you know, just do anything he wanted. You know, he had some limitations probably with how much money he could spend because it was Konami. And believe me, right. they had some limitations on, on budgets and stuff. Like he just had more constraints to work. Like the whole, like so much of, of the story and the characters of this game are told through these codec conversations, which are just like two little two little static heads on the screen, but there's so much voice content there and it's all so well done. Like that feels like something that he had to cook up of like, how am I going to get this much story out there? Like I can't make a cut scene for everything. Like right. I can't, I can't do, you know, like real time animation get of everything. Get creative with it. Yeah. Like, but to have like such good, just audio conversations and the performances are so good and so believable. Like, it's 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 remarkable and it's really one of the amazing things about that game that it's like yeah this this kind of couldn't this, game, this kind of might not have worked if you had had different performances or some different people directing those performances like this could have all fallen apart um you know they did do a remake of this game on the gamecube twin snakes i didn't 
I don't remember the specifics super well, but I remember thinking like, mm, I'd rather play the original. Like, I would love to play. I know they're they're doing a, like a, a a current gen version of Metal Gear Solid Three to remake. I'd love it if they did this. It's just, it it it's like kind of a perfect game in my mind. Um, and I I knew I liked it. I I knew I really liked it in the moment when it came out and when I played it a long time ago, but. I, I was kind of not ready for how much I liked it in 2024. All right. I like Have you played older. this? No. I'm not no? Into it. Yeah. You're not I'm into gonna, it. I've never been that super into it. Like, I oh. just don't like it. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I can try it. I don't know. I just don't have, like, a, a, any interest in the story and this character. Okay. I just don't have it. I mean, also, like, th- you know, this is the, the start of the story, like, the story over time and through the games got, believe it or not, it got wacky in spots, but you know, with him, with, with him setting it up, they really did need to keep it a bit more like down the middle, which again, I think works in its favor. Like there's a lot Give of me the, the one sentence summary of the story. So he's basically infiltrating to investigate this like nuclear weapon, which is the metal gear, which, you know, terrorists have, you know, overtaken is basically okay. what's going on. And very 90s action movie it's 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 a pretty standard like action movie thing but yeah he okay. does start to drop breadcrumbs about things that happened in the original metal gear game on the nes or things that might you know happen in the future with some of the games where you're kind of like what what was that a reference to or what what who was that character meaning so that is something that I think he kind of dug himself some holes over the different games of like, how do I make it all interconnect as I keep making up more and more story. Mm -hmm. But in that moment, it really did work. And it felt like a big story that was super well done. And I mean, for its time was absolutely cutting edge. So Hideo Kojima got a little bit of redemption uh, in my in my eyes. Going back to the good old days, yeah. I'll be playing I'll be playing that rather than uh, Death Stranding too. But I, I also do still have my belief that the odd numbered Metal Gear games are the good ones. But I think I might be due to give MGS two another shot because I know a lot of people do really love that game. Um, so maybe maybe I can squeeze that in and and do another little re rate re rating of that for for. For modern times you look oh, bored as can be let's move on i might fall over anymore <laughs> oh it's that okay on. yes i had to remind myself it's not actually boredom it's just uh sheer internal pain okay good <laughs> <laughs> uh we have some questions from our patreon community and we get each and every question from our patreon community if you okay. haven't signed up yet patreon.com slash kit and krista is where it all happens we have so Tons much stuff exclusive content that you cannot get anywhere else. I'm not talking about early access. We have that too, but content that we make that is only available for Patreon subscribers will never be posted uh, to YouTube or anywhere else. That includes bonus Q and A's behind the scenes and the behind the scenes yesterday, I showed off, I I bet you didn't watch it. I showed off the Nintendo Minute cookbook that you made for me. I heard from our Patreon subscribers. Many, many years ago. That's the only way to see great stuff like this. Yes, it's true. And of course, we were just talking about our upcoming spoiler cast that we're going to be doing for Like a Dragon. That's going to be exclusive. Infinite Wealth, and that's going to be exclusive to Patreon as well. All right, we got a couple questions for this week. First is from Bruce Stash. Hi, Kit and Krista. Do you have any idea where the cover art for the Wii game Fortune Street is <laughs> comprised of a bunch of pre-existing character art assets? For what reason was the cover put together in this way instead of making new art to show what this fun party game is about? Uh, Fortune Street. First of all, we love Fortune Street. We do. More of we that, do. please. It was a very like pack and ship mentality, though, for Fortune Street. Um, which is basically like, let's not put too much marketing behind it. It's a very niche audience, small game, not a big AAA title. And I think that's the reason why the artwork is not original. It's just very like cobbled together from existing art assets because it was very much a pack and ship mentality with this game. I remember for this, I worked on this game. It was very low marketing effort, but low we did priority. we did do one thing, which was we made because it's 
Fortune Street's interesting. It's kind of like stock market board game. Yeah. If you've never played it. So it is pretty It's unique. fun. We made like a fake Wall Street Journal kind of newspaper thing. Yeah, um, I remember that. You're kind of tying that in together with um, the world of Mario and these Dragon Quest characters. It's fun. But, you know, with a game like this, and, and this was, you know, a collab between Nintendo and Square Enix, there would often be a lot of angst about, like, oh, we can't ask Square Enix to do that. That's too much of a burden to put on them. So that kind of, like, relationship management was absolutely a thing. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times it was like, well, what can we reasonably ask them to help us with? And do you think they'd be open to stuff like this? And it's all about, you know, that kind of relationship stuff versus it being the best marketing for a game. So. Yeah. And with a bigger release, a lot of times there's more of that conversation up front of like, okay, you know, we'll need the team to do this or we'll need them to be available for these promotional things. But I think in this case, it was just like, yeah, we're going to make, we're going to do this on the cheap. We're going to keep it easy. We're not going to bother anybody. Yeah. So it, it just kind of came out with this somewhat low effort uh, box art here. Exactly. Riven is next. Have you ever backed a game through crowdfunding, such as Kickstarter? Have any such games fully materialized yet? What do you think about the process and about your purchases? I backed um, Shovel Knight. Oh, really? Yes, in the very, very early days of that game. It was like the first time I ever realized that you could do something like this with um, crowdfunding, like a game. And obviously that game came out to, like become a crazy you know life-changing franchise or whatever but um back in those early days it was very it was a very interesting thing to have a kickstarter for a video game yeah the heyday of kickstarter was really about 10 years ago and i think that yeah. was like one of the most successful examples of it but at the same time they really did commit to a lot through that they kickstarter did. which i wonder if you asked them today like if you gave them the truth serum, they might be like, yeah, we oh, we kind of overpromised on that because they, they were, were paying off the Kickstarter for, for a years. long time. Yeah, right. for a really long time. Probably at a point where they could have honestly moved on to a sequel or a new game, but they were still, you know, putting out content for this. So I think there have been, <clears throat> I know you still see occasionally some, some examples of, of games that use crowdfunding. I think it's best to look at it as like a marketing opportunity more yeah. so than a fund fundraising opportunity, even though that's like you, you're literally getting money from people. I think it's best looked at as a way to, you know, how can we get this game out there? How can we develop a passionate fan base of people who've never played it, but they, they feel invested and, and have them right. become evangelists in it. Um, I, don't, I don't want to downplay the funding part of it because sometimes that can really be you like need it a necessity right? yeah. but yeah. again like you need to very carefully balance what you are offering because you can end up in a hole that you know you you might have a successful release but if you've committed so much like you might end up eating into whatever money you've made or, or whatever that is i don't know we, exactly. we, i mean when we were starting our patreon like we talked about kickstarter a lot too of like you know let's not be like one of those kickstarters it overpromises from day one. Exactly. Like so, that's yeah. why we've been adding. You to overstretch our, yourself. Yeah, we've been adding you know, to our easily. Patreon little bit by bit um, over these two years as as we feel comfortable with what we're offering and, and you know when we feel really confident, like we do add more stuff. But it can be dangerous to to promise so much almost out of desperation of like yes, please let's let's hope this blows up and and we'll deal with actually delivering on this stuff later. Yeah. Stevie Meeks is next. Hi, Kit and Krista. If Nintendo Switch 2 is not launching this year, do you think Nintendo will continue adding to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, whether that be another booster course pass or a character pass like Smash had, or some sort of additional gameplay mode such as missions like in Mario Kart DS to keep the game's momentum? So hypothetical where there's no Switch 2 this year. Yeah, I do wonder if they figured out, you know, towards the middle of mario kart 8 like hey this is a thing like we should keep doing this because obviously it's really popular and people are really engaged with it um so yeah i i think that if there was no 
Switch 2 um, this year, they definitely would consider doing the Mario Kart 8 booster pass like formula, maybe even with other games, like with Splatoon is one of the ones that I, that comes to mind is like, hmm, maybe they, instead of doing like the next Splatoon game, they can just sort of add continue to add content to it to keep it fresh and have that be very seasonal. Um, yeah, I think that obviously this kind of, um, like what, what they're doing with the booster pass course uh, really works. So I'm sure they see the success of that. I think this is one of the reasons why we feel like the switch Two is coming this year is they've kind of run out of things to do with, you know, the, you, you only have so many times you can revisit a franchise in a generation before you start to negatively impact what you can do in the next generation. So I think they want to tread lightly with something like Mario Kart, where it's like, yeah, I mean, you could keep doing booster course passes forever and keep coming up with these things. But at some point, you need to make a break and, and get ready for the next thing. And like you look at almost all of the big Nintendo franchises that have had a really big, impactful entry on the Switch. And I think they accomplished everything that they really want to. So like, I think we talked about Chibi Robo last week, I guess, you know, there, there are a couple that we haven't seen, but for the most part, like, yeah, we got great representation from so many great Nintendo franchises and you can't just keep doing those again and again and hope to get the same result at some point, you know, just kind of, kind of the nature of the business. You do need to have that next generation of, you know, new hardware with a new game idea to get people as excited as they can be. So I just think it's like the walls are closing in a little bit, not to use a, like little bit, yeah. a negative metaphor um, where the options are limited at this point on the switch, which mm -hmm. is why I think we're, you know, for whatever this direct could end up being like our expectations are not super high. Yeah. Ready to, it does feel like there's a readiness to move on. Like yes. they just squeezed everything out of it. Exactly. Last question today is from Tuscoob. Do you think it's any one game on Xbox's part that needed to be successful? In another way, do you think the current conversation around Microsoft would still be happening were Halo Infinite or Starfield to be better received and or better selling? So is there one game from the past that if that had done better, maybe Xbox's fortunes would have been different? Yeah, like you were saying before, like this, this business of triple A releases and banking your company's success on these triple A games is, is very risky. And I think Microsoft had, um, you know, really high hopes for a game like Starfield. They put so much effort into marketing that game into like, you know, 10 years of developing that game, the expense, the, the resources taken to do that, but it, it, you know, I wouldn't say Starfield was a failure, obviously, but it didn't have the, the, I don't think the impact that it needed to have for it to be worth all the effort. Um, so I think that it's, it's a good lesson that you really shouldn't hinge your business around a single game um, because it could just be hit or miss. Like you just don't know. Um, so I think to answer your question in another way, like I think they realize that it's not like if one game is, was successful, we would be okay. It's more so like if a one game isn't successful, we're not okay and we can't stay in this kind of you know business anymore. It's just not like feasible for us to remain um, doing it this way. Yeah, and I think this was a question that Phil got asked in the infamous kind of funny interview and his response was, you know, there there is no one game that will reverse our fortunes or like make or break the business. And especially with them being reliant on Game Pass, that's especially true because, you know, different people are going to be interested in different games. And you do need to have like a really steady turnover of new games to, to bring people in and keep them invested in it. So... I think that's more the challenge for them is like, how do we, you know, every month have like a half dozen really promising new games coming in that enough people want to play that we can 
keep them hooked in and keep them engaged. And yeah, like a couple times a year, we'll have the mega, mega, mega releases, which definitely are good proof points for the value that you pay for Game Pass, especially as the price goes up. But I think for them, it's less about the one game versus that, you know, month to month ecosystem that they're able to create. And as I look back at, you know, all the games they've released this generation, like I, I can't really think of one where it's like, oh, if that was just, you know, if the Metacritic for that was 10 points better, everything would be different. I don't, I don't think they've had a game like that anyways. And I think those, I think games like that are, are few and far between anyway. I think it's more of a portfolio yeah. view overall. Yeah, exactly. All right. Those are our questions. Thank you to everybody who sent in questions. It's time to recognize some of our wonderful Patreon subscribers. Starting with our final boss, Aaron Hash. I'm sitting so in a different place you. today. Yeah. There it is. Aaron's great artwork. That's what Aaron gets as the final boss. There can only be one, and it is Aaron. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm really glad that you put Aaron's great um, artwork in the background, even though you moved spots today. Exactly. But yes, he has um, been a great boss so far. So thank you, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go with our superstars, Ben Eichhorn. Mara Mayhem. Eigenverse. Kiss My Flapjack. Mike Chin. Roy Eschke. Switching it up, underscore. Safazon. VGM Life. Link, the hero of winds. Angela Bycroft and her pig Molly. Thomas O'Rourke. Kyle LaBeouf. Roberto Nieves. Frederick Uf Conradson. Andrew Yuhas. Chili. Bruce Stash. And Simon. All right, are we ready for the one-up club? We sure are. Okay, here we go. A Ron Burgundy. Ale Alejandro. Astro Dev. Awesome 46. Bad Moon Horizon. Benji B. Bookum Dano. Bookishly Fab. Brad SF56. Brooke Obscura. Rovac Novak. Cameron. Chelly Squirrel. Chrissy. Christopher Lay. Captain Alex. Quick Cat. Cristobal. C Roper 17. Cynical Squid. Doxon. Dark Chaos. Doinko. Elite Peach. Esparts 50. Fart Priest 69. Furbound. Fernie and Jess Forever. Fox the Boy. Garrett Hullfish. Garth the Wolf. Gartooth. Heroic. Iris Marin. Jay Rando. Jabroni Jones. Jeffrey Hernandez. Jeremy Lewis. Jerry 92602. Jesse Hernandez. John Responte. Jonathan Rowe. Jordan Collette. Jordan Hammerley. Joshua Clements. Gigi Fruit. Justin Leminger. Kawa 2796. Keith Kwan. Kevin Delane. Kilo Kibo. Christopia Party With Me. Kyle Gamer Barry Rookie. Kyle Kretzer. Linnell Stickman. Lazy Cat for Coffee. Lex. Lit. M1 iMath. Macho Potato. Mad Dog 5981. Happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs> Magnificent Easy G and Callie Marie. Marky Man 64. Mario Man 392. Mecha Dragon 101. Medallion. Megan. Michael Cravens. Mikey. Mr. Ryan 07. Motomania. Mr. Andy Palm. Mr. Beans and Dip. MSM Poke Gamer. My Tran. Nasir. Nathan Burkhart. Nick. Ninja 11. Panda Buns. Pangy. Palsy Pace. Paul Gale Network. Prime Factor. Prince Charmless. Reaver. Rain Tech. Record Rumble. Rob Osborne. The Rocks. Ryan Etta. Sharif Jackson. Shinryu. Schmiggles. Slowbro. Snazzle. Spicy Munchkin. Steel Citrone. Stevie Meeks. Tales of Link. Tay 120N64. The Shark Among Men. Thomas Alvarez. Three Rivers. Timmy V. Topher Schmofer. Totally Joe Ed. Travis Torline. Trajawi. Tugs Puppy Bear. Tusku. Tyler Geis. 
Vezvez. Video game stupid. Vig Victor. Viridian. Virtual Bot. Weed Kingdom. WG Grizzy. What up, Khalil? Why you why you? Wicked Davy. Will Johnson. Zudiver. Zada Essa. Zelgaro. Zapietti. And Zroid. Wow. I'm not gonna make <laughs> it, but I made it. Please. Is the is the day quill holding up? It's very quickly where As we reach the end of this podcast, tell us about your physical state at this very Help moment. Me. <laughs> Help me! <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, I do not wish this illness on anybody. It is horrible. I have like feverish and my throat really hurts and I feel horrible. But anyways, we've made it to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to Patreon if you want to see me live. It's patreon.com slash Kit and Krista. Help me afford right. the medicine that I need. Good. Um, yes. What do you have to say for yourself? If you're watching on video, you can go ahead and subscribe. <laughs> give this video a thumbs up and also leave us a comment. If you're listening on audio, you can also subscribe, leave a five-star rating, and a written review, please. And we're on the socials. We're on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and Threads. All right. I really have to go. So we'll Back talk to, to you bed you later. go. <laughs> Bye. Bye.